All right. Well, it is 9 a.m. and I have absolutely no idea, once again in my life, if YouTube is working or not. It keeps telling me that my stream is not excellent connection, but it doesn't matter. What's going on, everybody? What's up, City Pop Dave? I know you're already chilling in here, waiting for that morning stream. Oh, Hajiman, also here, my core group. So happy to see y'all in the morning. Today, I got something special for y'all, something new to me, but probably fairly well known to y'all. A little bit of Yoshino Fuji Mall. So when we had a little impromptu, one of my new ideas for a sun, uh, kind of an evening thing, I'm still going to do one of these wake and base babies at night. But until then, uh, I decided to do a little bit of playing to show you guys what I was working on. And this was a highly requested artist and one that I'm embarrassed to say that I've seen the album cover for on the side of like YouTube suggestions and looking through Discogs. But haven't really spent a whole lot of time looking at him. So today is going to be a pretty fun experience for me because I'm going to get to experience this music for the second time. I cheated a little bit. When I woke up this morning, I listened through the album one time while I was kind of getting going and making my coffee, but I'm pretty much going to give it a fresh listen right now. So hopefully you guys enjoy. As always, let me know if you got any extra little nuggets of wisdom because I love it. And without any further ado, oh yeah, good morning, Desi. What's cracking? Let's take a little bit of a, a look here into who Fujima Yoshino, uh, see who he is a little bit and check in on this here before we dive all in. So let's look up the Wikipedia because that's always where I like to start. And the first thing that comes up is the ABs, which is a Japanese rock band that he is a part of that when I was doing my preliminary, just kind of like barely looking through kind of research stuff here, let me get that out of the way, so. Uh, <laughs> when I was doing my research stuff here, I'm gonna put this over here actually so I have a little more room. Bam. Uh, yeah, I saw this pop up a lot. I saw, this is a you know very popular band. Um, again, I'm super unfamiliar, but look at the discography. They got quite a few albums. Uh, yeah, interesting, 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 interesting. All right, I'm gonna keep the chat open here on the side. Oh yeah, what's up Chains, what's going on? Angel Silva, nice to see you, nice to see you. Okay, so we've got, interesting. So that looks like what he's you know, more known for, but let's hit just the regular old straight up Wikipedia. Hmm, very nice. Absolutely nothing here for us. <laughs> well, you know what's next then, y'all. JA.Wikipedia. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> J.A. Wikipedia. There we go. Oh, yeah. There's the stuff. There's the stuff. Okay. So, this is a 1982 album. And this is something that is Fujimal. And let's go ahead and hit this guy right here. And let's go ahead and hit that a translate page. And let's see if we can hit anything. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Well, how about this? I have no idea what this is, but I have a feeling if I translate... <laughs> okay, I've completely failed on this. <coughs> well, since I failed so bad on this, let's just go ahead and just start diving in right to the music and listen to this first track here. So the first track is called Who Are You? So this is not his first album. This is actually, I'm going to go ahead and switch over here to a little bit better view for you guys so you can see this a little bit better here on the research. Hello, camera two. Uh, what we got, his first album here, came out in 1981. And I am very poor at Japanese, and so I have no idea what this says. But the genre says stage and screen, so I kind of get the feeling that this is, I don't know, maybe like a movie or a TV show soundtrack or something along those lines. I'm not exactly sure. But for sure, this other album, self-titled Yoshino Fujimal, this one is definitely, you know, in his own rights and doing his own thing. And as we're going to look through here and see some of the artists, a lot of new ones. But hey, Nobu Saito. Coming back at you with that crazy percussion. And I, I clocked some pretty funky bongos going on here. So we're going to hear that in track two, absolutely for sure. Okay, Ohajiman is hitting us up. Yeah, uh, Matsushita as being in the band ABC. So again, looking for these tie up ah, right there. Ding, ding, ding. Ohajiman for the win. There we go. City Pop Dave already knew it. There we go. Okay, well, let's just dive on in, y'all. Let's hear that track one. Who are you? Here we go. Mm. Good start. Mm, 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 mm. There it is. 
Alex is happy now. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I was not listening with headphones this morning. Funky. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are you? Who are you? Switch up of the lyrics, go from the male to female. I like that. Here we go with the breakdown. All right. I know we're listening to a lot of this today, but man, this is funky, baby. Oh, and that sax just can't stay out. Come back for more. hate to, to stop a funky song when we're getting just mega funky with it but we got to talk a little bit about it here so this is very 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 funky and i am very very happy about finding this thank you all for every uh, everybody who was suggesting this this is awesome 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 call so reading up here a little bit about this this actually is his first debut album as far as being uh the album that even though it wasn't the first thing he technically did, it uh, ends up being his first solo album as far as releasing his own thing. He had a band beforehand. It was called the... Blah, blah, blah. I think he named it after himself. Uh, where did he... I just saw it. Anyway, but he joins... Uh, in 1982, the same year, he joins the ABs, which is clearly the bigger band here uh, that he formed through, but... Anyway, so just to confirm, this is his first album. So 1982, even though he had singles before it, this was the big one that really went well for him. And then he had a follow-up, Romantic Guys, the next year. And then, you know, as we see, drop off until 2007. <laughs> so clearly he went full tilt with the ABs. But let's go back and let's talk about this first, uh, this title track, Who Are You? And again, I'm just going to hammer this name into y'all's brains until you're sick of it, Niles Rogers. He just nails that opening Niles Rogers feel. So if we listen to this opening again, we've got this, you know, the top three notes. We've, we're playing it in a chord. It's a bar chord. And I'll show you here in a second after I play it. And he's just jamming on it. Half step slide down, slide it back up. That's like the definition of funk. Let's listen to a little bit of that funk right there. Half steps, baby. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's see if I can not deafen y'all with this. I'm not sure how loud this is going to be. There we go. 
So what he's got going on up there, I'll switch over the camera here so you can see a little bit better. What he's got, he's up here on the, uh, the seventh fret and he's got these three covered. And it just makes a very open chord and he's just riffing on that. I'm gonna turn this down so it doesn't kill you guys with the overkill, with the <laughs> strum. That right there is 100% Niles Rogers. And just because we always like to make connections here at the bass channel, let's listen to a little bit of it. So this is a uh, chic you can get by if you try. I've used this song before as an example of uh, Niles Rogers just because it's such a clean example of his guitar playing. And you can hear right in the middle, it's almost the exact same riff. Now this is 1977, so this is five years before. So this would have been a a known musical trope by this time. You can get by if you try. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So we've got that same kind of thing that we're going. Get the guitar here going. I don't know all the chords, but it's it's like that. It's that same feel that we have at the beginning here. Let's listen back now to, to Yoshino. Let's listen to what he's got. So that's the first thing that pops out. And then right there where you hear that boing, that is called a flexitone, random music instrument that nobody needed to know. But that was absolutely a leftover of the funk disco era that carries now over into this kind of, because city pop is, is interesting because it's almost like a post-funk, post-disco, but it's very much infusing both of them. And whereas in America, funk and disco was kind of moving away. It was still pretty darn strong in the 80s, but people were starting to move away from it. Japan was just like, give me more, give me more, give me more. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me check back in here with the chat because I lost it. <laughs> Guys, you need to help me out. I need a, a manager to come and run all of my tech stuff because I just suck. <laughs> okay, good. Well, let's go ahead now and let's keep chucking through the old album here because I always love to get stuck. Let's listen to number two, Midnight Plus, spelled mid and then night plus. Let's check it out. Come on. Yes, yes. Yes to this camera. Yes to this camera. Yeah. Pump the volume. All right, Chains hit us with some dope information. Bassist on this is the bass player for Final Fantasy X. Let's dig a little deeper into the bass player here and let's see what kind of credits he's got. Thanks for the heads up, Chains. Man, that is funky. Mm. Such a good hook. Bow, 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 bow.
bass line. Dun, dun, ba, dee, 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 oh, that's so cool. Man, I know. Okay, City Pop Dave, hitting it on the head. 100% banger ratio. This is a good song. Okay, let's just look up. So we got a hit here from Chains as far as looking through. Not let's. Uh, I want to say his name right. Naoki Watanabe. Watanabe. Yeah, something like that. Uh, looking at the bass player for this album and kind of looking through. And I'm not sure if you guys can see. I think you can barely see on the side. You can see the years here, but I'll help you out. This very first album, Spectrum, 1979. Where we are right now, 1982, so this is like five albums into his career of playing on other people's albums. First three being Spectrum, somebody I'm not very familiar with. And as we're looking through here, he's got a pretty solid career all the way through the 80s playing pretty consistently on albums here. Uh, again, things that I'm not familiar with. Uh, I mean, we got some various things here. Oh, look at that. We got the ABs. Hmm. Well, let's look at this now for a second. Let's see if he is the bass player for the ABs here consistently. Let's look this up. Members. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Past members. Okay, so he was, and let's look at ABs for a second. So they had a 1982, they had a three-year run to 85, dissolved, got back together for one year in 88, dissolved, Got back together in 2003, and then they're still happening now. So let's see how long that uh, Watanabe was in this band, in the group. So we got the first album here, it looks like. And is that 1980? No, that's 1985. So maybe he was... Oh, here we go. Here's the first album, 1983. Okay, so we got that first album. So he was definitely there for the first two. And then where does the other one say? It said 1988. Let's look and see if he's got credits in 88 for the ABs. 87, 87, 88. Okay, ba 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 ba. No. Okay, so he's just there for two, two albums. And then looking here at what he's done later, we're looking at the Final Fantasy soundtrack uh, for Final Fantasy X and trying to see if we can find his name in here. Let's see if we can uh, do a different version that maybe has a little ha 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 ha. Here we go. Let's see who this bass player is. Nope, incorrect. <laughs> but, okay, ah, man. A lot of interesting. Okay, this is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh. Um. Yeah. So he did play bass on. <laughs> this is a lot to sift through. <laughs> let's go back to the album though for a second, and let's just look again at who we have on here that we know already. Again, Nobu Saito. He's the big person that pops up for immediate recognition with me because let's listen. I bet if we listen right now, we're gonna hear some interesting percussion, either bongos or something funky going on. So this is halfway through track two, Midnight Plus. Let's, let's see where we pop in. I love it when I get lucky. Yeah, bongos, baby. You see, it's, it's going back. If we click on uh, Nobu Saito again, we start looking at his credits as far as what people pigeonhole him as, which is unfair. Uh, they put him in as things like world music, um, you know, African beats and all the, you know, these interesting percussion things. And as we talked last time, the whole notion of world music is kind of a crap term that just means non-European Western term, the uh, non-European Western music. So it lumps everything together. South America, Africa, South Asia, North Asia, East Asia, Russia, like all these other things. And so what he does is he has a lot of, uh, he focuses on these African and these uh, South American beats that are really, really interesting. And so these bongos right here, I'm not a super expert on it, but I would have to guess this is more in the realm of the, the Latin style. Let's listen to it one more time because this is a, another hallmark. We were talking about mixing bass with uh, drums and how they can reinforce each other and help each other out. This is an example of the bass doing its own thing. And the percussion is, uh, I mean, we'll have to listen to see if there's a kick. But the interesting thing are these bongos going, you know, all over the place, non-repeating patterns. Check it out. Oop, I'm going to rewind so we can hear. Yeah. I'm also a big fan. Okay, let's look at who produced this album because what I am really enjoying and this i'm not going to go ahead and knock everybody for this because youtube does weird things with left and right audio signals uh but 
whenever somebody mixes something really nicely, since I've got you know left and right headphones on, you can hear the difference of, well, where are they mixing stuff? And if you're not sure, you can always lift off a headphone to be like, is the bass just in one ear? Is the, is the guitar in just one, you know? Old school, again, my reference, Beatles. Beatles did that kind of bananas all the time, but they did it extreme. Like they would do 80% uh, Paul McCartney over here, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Harrison, you know, and then 80% uh, John Lennon, you know, with the guitars so that the guitars were hitting you from both sides. And so if you listen to the mono versus the stereo, it's way different. Getting to my point here, this is a really good mix because the the bongo percussion is all in my left ear. Like I hear that, I hear a little more guitar in my right ear, and then I'm balanced in between with the bass, which is that arguably the center hold, maybe the percussion is, and then that kick, that boom, ta, boom, ta, boom, ta, boom, ta. But it's real subtle. Let's listen to it one more time. Rewinding again. Yeah, so there we go, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, we got some more hits here as far as uh, Chains and Dave's helping us out here. Trying to look through these tracks for figuring out <laughs> what is what, but he said electric bass is what, ah, kaboom, kaboom. Tracks three through 21. You guys are awesome. You guys save me so much time. Okay, awesome. Wanna spin forever. Now, let's look real quick here before we move on to the next track. I want to know who mixed this bad boy. Victor Ayoyama Studio. I bet we're going to see some interesting albums from the studio. Takako, oh, oh, it's like Takako Mamiya? No. Wow, lots of albums. Can we do it by year, please? Yes. Okay. Uh oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Am I on the right channel? Oh, yeah, you guys can see that. That's Kiyotaka. Interesting, interesting. Mixed in the same group, same guy, same sound, similar sound at least. More, okay, a re release of Aqua City. All right. Let's keep going here. Southern All Stars. We'll just make it to the 90s and then we'll stop. See if we have anybody other that just pops out immediately as somebody that we know. Okay, well, here's our uh, Ryuchi Sakamoto. Sakamoto was a uh, composer arranger that we looked at the other day who had done a couple tracks on. I don't know if it was Tatsuro's album or if that was on maybe uh, Shambara's album, something like that. But he he wrote a couple pieces for them. But yeah, there's some more Ryuchi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so at least we got one, uh, one connection here to, uh, to Omega Tribe, which is another group that just on top of being mega funky, they sound awesome. Okay, as usual, 25 minutes in, only two songs down. Let's start speeding up. Next one, One Shot Lady. Okay, and if you guys have any other comments that you want me to talk about, let me know. Let me know, because I'm happy to talk about it. Third track. Oh, I like that harmony. On top of this music just being excellent, man, I love the mix. It just sounds so good. What is it? Oh, man. 
Okay, we're gonna just keep this low in the background. We're just gonna talk about this a little bit. Man, this is so funky. And again, just so far, because one of the things we talk about with these albums is continuity and how it flows from track to track and you know how we get from one thing to another. And so far, this has been a really, in my opinion, super good flow from you know, kind of getting into it, ramping up the funk, and then kind of slowing it down a little bit. But we're maintaining this really funky, groovy feel. And like on top of the bass sounding so good, the percussion is so interesting. And even though we've got very standard drums doing, you know, fill, let's listen like, here's a Tom fill. So that, 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 that is made by hitting the, your fingers hurt so bad <laughs> on the side of a Congo, like a, a, a Congo, <laughs> on the side of a Congo, like a huge Congo drum there. So if like I'm on the floor, it's like this tall, big, and you just go pop, 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 pop. And we'll listen to that one more time. Cause that's what that sound is. Again, going to these, you know, world music instruments, which is really for our purposes with uh, Noble Saito. Latin America, African rhythms. One more time, let's listen to that. Pla, pa, 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 pa. Yeah, so this is one of those things where if you did this live, uh, it's kind of like if you guys have ever seen, oh, and if you haven't checked it out, you got to go see it. Um, Stop Making Sense. It is the Talking Heads. Unbelievable band. So David Byrne, I love him so much. Really, really great singer, songwriter, amazing performer. Really, really fun to watch. Stop Making Sense. Excellent, excellent, excellent. One of the best probably of all time. Live shows where the concept is every song they add one element, one musician, one instrument, something like that. So it starts off with just David Byrne, guitar, uh, singing, then adds the bass player, she comes in, then adds the drummer, then... But anyway, but they have uh, so much interesting percussion that they had to have a separate percussionist just doing all the interesting congo, cymbals, flexitone, all those interesting instruments. And so even though the core band is like four, four or five people, uh, the live show cannot exist without like 12. And I have a feeling that this is exactly how this was. Cause if you look at, again, if we're looking through at what these credits are, all these instruments, you know, sax solo, you know, we've got all these, you know, electronic drums, we got regular drums, we got percussion, we got keyboard, you know, flute, all this stuff, which is normal to have on an album, but usually the core, like for Tatsuro, I feel like Tatsuro's band, if you looked at it, he's got that core band of like four or five. And then he adds maybe one or two extra. I feel like with this, this is more of a core group, it looks like, of maybe two to three. You know, because you've got, um, you've, obviously, you've got Yoshino in there. He's a huge force. And then you've got uh, Watanabe, because clearly they stuck together. So, and, and with the prominence of the bass in this album, I really feel like he had a good amount of fill. Or we can take it as Yoshino is a little bit like a Tatsuro character who is very much like, I know exactly what I want to do. Here you go. Here's the chart played exactly like this. Cause that is, you look, he goes on with his albums. He just gets more and more and more fingers in the control of what's going on. Not in a bad way, but just very much like, no, I want this and this is the sound and you're going to play that. And you know, and, and he really has mastery of that arranging and it, it shows in his music that he knows how well to do it. This is very similar to me. I think that who, you know, this is, again, this is new to me. I have to listen to more of his albums. I'll have to listen to the ABs, see what's going on with all that good stuff. But to me so far, I feel like this is kind of a rival to Tatsuro. Obviously nowhere near as many albums, but this is a pretty dang good album and a pretty interesting one. So going back to my point though, about talking about all these people on stage and doing a live show, it's just interesting to think of who the core group is and then, you know, how you expand from there. But yeah, well, let's listen to another track, and I'm going to look a little bit more into, because we haven't talked about any of the backup vocalists, we haven't talked about any of the keyboards, but let's keep going here. Last track on the first side, A4, Freeway 5 to South. You know, sometimes these song titles are just weird, and sometimes they're just awesome. This is an awesome one. I don't get it. 
I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a slow jam. Oh. Wrong! Jody! <laughs> <laughs> you listen to enough of this stuff, you get a little bit of a feel for what's going to happen. Ooh, City Pop stops. Did he just say whiskey soda? We're going to do an Act 65 on one replay on that one because I both want to hear the City Pop stops and a possible whiskey soda. I'm taking that as whiskey soda, baby. Yo, Hajiman, you should uh, you should check for me if you can find a good video of a live thing. We'll pop it up here and we'll just check out a little bit of what Tatsuro Live looks like because I'd be interested to see that. And yeah, that would help my point. Thank you. Okay, City Pop Dave hit me. Whiskey Sofa. Nope. No taking it back. No t no taking it back. Whiskey Sofa are apparently very popular there. Okay, let's see what a whiskey soda is. Highball. Is that? I'm a little embarrassed because I worked in a bar for like six years in Highball. All right, we're looking it up. We're looking it up. There's a gift for this. <laughs> Didn't think we'd be talking about whiskey at 9.30 on a Tuesday morning, but okay. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> so we are, in fact, confirmed here by, by Dave. We are talking about whiskey sodas, which is a highball. So again, fitting in with that City Pop lifestyle. For those of you who haven't heard when we talk about this, City Pop doesn't really refer as much as, I mean, it absolutely is a genre, but it's more of a kind of like a social movement, kind of thinking of disco era. So it's a City Pop era. And this was one of the things, it's like people going out to clubs, partying, having a good time. This was kind of a new thing for Japan. You know, they had a lot of money, they had, uh, you know, uh, not only economic prosperity, but social prosperity and people are having fun. Like I said, disco had just gotten over there. All their musicians had gone over to New York and been like, yeah, yeah. And then they took everything else together and they fused it. And now we got this awesome bananas. Okay, let's listen a little bit more to finish up uh, track four off of side one. And again, we still got these Nile Rodgers guitars. We got these disco hits. Bah! Uh-oh. We're finally going to talk about Matsushita. Uh-oh. Okay, we're gonna let this play in the background. Oh, guitar solo. Oh, Matsushita. Matsushita, here we go. Or maybe this is.
Okay, man, really spa we're going spacey there at the end, really getting into it. Cool, man. Okay, now, here's our, uh, our little Kevin Bacon moment for the day, our six degrees of separation. So, the person that I have been purposefully omitting here is Makato Matsushita. I always pause before I say the names because I know who they are, like I can see the face, but I still don't know everybody's names by heart. <laughs> but he is somebody who I was like, oh yeah, how do I know that name? Oh yeah, First Light. Awesome song. Also, spoiler alert, one of my covers is gonna be this coming out pretty soon. Look out for that. First Light is awesome. And as we look through here, oh well, let's make some uh, let's make some connections here. Oh, maybe what what else did he uh, what else did he play on? Let's see. Oh, maybe if I can click on the right button here. It's a little performance. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh okay, okay. <gasps> Mayamane. Oh no, Tasogare. The song that I tried to play the other night that YouTube pitched it to me. Oh, by the way, I found the right one, so that is coming. Uh, okay, first light. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, here we are right now. Okay, Matsushita, Matsushita. Okay, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. Oh, Tomoko Aran. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, let's get. Hmm. What else are we gonna find in here? Mm, keep going. I want to find the thing that I found earlier. Mm, Maria Takanuchi. Mm -hmm. Now I was looking because there was a Tatsuro in here, and I want to see the one where he works with Tatsuro. <laughs> uh. And yes, I think you're right, Ohajiman. Finding a live Tatsuro Yamashita performance is pretty difficult. But if anybody could find it, it would be you. That's why. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, he has done a ton of stuff. And he is the connecting tissue now to Yasuo. This is the connection. Yasuo Tomikura. Here's the guy. Bass player then, who plays not only with Miya Takeuchi, Toshiki Katamatsu, and then as we're scrolling back down through here, where was the other one I found? Yuri Kokubu, there we go. Junko Yogami, yeah, this is the role I wanted to go down. Mako Yaka, <laughs> Mako Yakahara, Mako Nakahara, all these people. Yeah, that's the connection. That's where we're going. Okay, well, so far with this album, this has been pretty darn funky. And tracks, or side one, which is all five minute songs, have all been pretty solid run throughs of just varying levels of funk like I would say it goes on a funk scale of 0 to 10 like maybe a 7 then a 9 now I take that back like an 8 then a 9.2 then a 7 then like a 7.5 I mean what, what, how funky is this we're getting some interesting outro but nope, no outro, fake out. Mm, mm. Oh, and here's one of the new things that I'm excited to show you guys. Let's see if my camera's not dead yet. So one of the things here, hopefully this doesn't creak in your eyes. I finally got myself a bass, a compressor for my bass. I am very happy. And this is why the sound that I'm wanting to get with this compressor, it's this sound right here. Let me play it for you because it sounds awesome. What it does, a compressor, just the 30 second thing. If things are too soft, it raises them up. If they're too loud, it lowers them down so that you can keep a constant level of sound output. So when you're popping and slapping, which are crazy different sounds of pressure volumes, this evens it out so you just get the good gunk. And then you get these awesome ba -da -ba -da -bam, ba -da -ba -da -bam. thank you to City Pop Dave for showing me, wrong camera, how to use that kind of stuff. And he was the one who finally pushed me into like, I need this thing. But that's the, that's the same idea of what's going on with that. Okay, let's keep moving. We got 20 minutes to do another another side. So now we're going side B. So as we've talked about before, this old form, old form, uh, the original format of doing records, and same thing with like tapes, is you have two sides. You got side A, side B, you gotta flip it. You gotta stop, keep going. So there was this idea of first half flow, second half flow. So the first half has been pretty consistently funky. Let's see if we keep that up in the second half or if they decide to switch it up. Girls in Love With Me. First track, side B. Ooh. 
Okay. What year is this? 1982? When did this come out? July. So, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Okay, I'm going to guess after this album came out, there was a huge boom in babies in March, because this is baby making music. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we've heard... So, we're keeping it funky, this album. But we got pretty consistent... This sounds like a band. Because a lot of the albums we've heard of, you know, before this, even somebody like, you know, um, you know Tatsuro, his albums don't sound so much like a band constantly as they do, uh, like, somebody's concept album. I don't know how to explain this. If you listen to... Let's use punk rock as an example. If you listen to like Bad Religion or if you listen to like NoFX or, you know, M Dead Milkman, all these kind of people, you listen to their songs, almost all the songs for most of the time is drums, bass, guitar, second guitar, shred, vocals. That's it. Like the whole time. With these albums, we're switching between, oh, we've got a clavichord. No, we've got a synthesizer. No, we got a piano. Okay, well, we got an upright bass. No, we got a, you know, electric bass. Okay, well, then we've got a uh, world percussion. Okay, well, we got a stand. We got all these different things going on. And so in the albums, the songs sound like people are moving from instrument to instrument. This album feels like everyone's pretty much sticking to their guns and sticking with the same bass, same drum, same percussion, same sax, you know, all these kinds of things. We'll see if it changes, but I dig on this. Also, chains. Your information is never a bad connection. I love it. You just brought up a very good point. When we have Watanabe playing in this album with Dimension, which is our connection now, to Tomoko Aoki, the bassist on Timely. Henri, great connection chains. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's look into that second while we're listening to this. Look, your heart's in a world. She walks into the room. You just can't take your eyes off her. Look at the way that she moves. Just watch the way that she grooves. You know there's just no way you'd ever get enough of her. Girls in love with me, I'm the lucky guy. Makes me feel so good, I could touch the skies. Good All lyrics. The guys in the world and the girls chosen me. Not just the way that she smiles, more than the look in her eyes. You know that kind of beauty really comes from deep inside. More than the eye can see, something the heart just feels. She's got the special kind of light, there's just no way. All right, Chains, knocking it out of the park. Here's our second Kevin Bacon for the day as far as things that we have already talked about. So we were looking up Naoki Watanabe, looking up connections as far as people we've already known. We don't have to look very far. We look at 1994's album, Second Dimension, where we've got Watanabe and, get out of my way, Tomohito Aoki. Oh, well, where have we seen the name Tomohito Aoki before? Oh, bass player that we've looked at. Oh, well, what did he play on? Of course, some Henri albums. Timely bass player for that. Let's see what else we got here. If it'll load. 
Uh oh. Toshiki Katamatsu. Uh oh. Jackie Chan. <laughs> Again, the Jackie Chan episode is coming. I got to figure out. I have to listen through because we can't just do one Jackie Chan album. We're going to have to go through and lose our minds on it. But let's keep going through the, the tracks here and let's see what else we got. So we're still staying funky. We're keeping that band vibe going. So let's go back now. So Girls in Love With Me, pretty chill, pretty chill song. I think we're right at the sax soul. Let's check in again. Maybe we just finished it. Yeah, again, it's a crime to skip through a lot of this stuff, but we got 13 minutes to do three tracks. So let's do Shang Hide Night. Okay, remember how I said weird to awesome? This one is super awesome. <clears throat> this is weird. Shang Hide. Is that really how you spell it? Shang. <laughs> that was a little racist. It's a little racist to call it Shang Hide Night and then play a Chinese pentatonic scale. You decide. <laughs> uh, it's funky though. He's sitting some low notes. Lazy blues. Alright, let's look at this keyboardist. So this keyboardist did the official uh, did the official soundtrack for Sailor Moon. Cool. As an album release, too. Cool. Whoa. Alright, Homeboy's got a lot of credits here. Lots of playing credits. Takayushi. Henri. Shinamashita. Oh, he's on this Takayushi? Wow. Uh, is this called Rest? Uh, request. Okay, stopping on a city pop stop. Okay, so we're looking up here. Uh, the keyboardist, uh, say the name right, Yasuharo Nakanishi, and he's only on here for three tracks, but the track we're listening to right now, he is playing on, and he's playing very chill in the background. He's just got some uh, yeah, chill. It's just, wow, wow, like not a clavichord. Let's listen to it again. It's just electronic keyboard in the background. Well, solo, then we'll listen to the solo. Very chill. So we'll listen to this a little bit while I'm pulling up some more connections here, and then we'll listen to the keyboard solo, and then we'll talk about who he also did solos with. I'll be honest, 
of all these songs, this was the one to me so far that's like, eh, I don't know about that. That kind of sold me. That was pretty cool. I like that sound. Okay, so looking at this cat, checking him out again. Uh, pfft, again. Uh, Yashuro Nakanishi. This is uh, one of the... Pfft, find it here. Uh, this is the keyboard cat. Uh, who plays on this, and he also has played on, um, let me say this right, because it was Henri's album, uh, uh, yeah, after this, Henri's album, he did two Maria Takayuchi albums, her first two albums, uh, he does a, a Toshiki Karamatsu album, I think, we've got uh, Tatsuro Yamashita in here, got some of our big names, and then we start getting in the late eight, oh, there's a uh, request, mm-hmm, Takako, yeah, lots of other stuff, uh, anime soundtrack, there we go. All these guys have some fingers in anime at some point in their lives. Okay, eight minutes. I might be able to do it today. Just keep going here. Not what I'm looking for. B3. Are we finally going to get a slow song? It's either going to be this one or the next one. I'm going to say this is still funky, and I'm going to say Pretender is the slow one. Here's the bet. Uh-oh. It's getting Phil Collins in here. Oh no. Oh, that's funky. Oh, baby. Oh, that was a tasty start. That was a tasty start. Mm, mm. Oh, yeah. What's up, Panda Man? Thank you for the comment. I will tell you, as far as the tab readability of the sheet music for the videos, I feel you, man. It's it's hard. City Pop Dave and I, we're, we're tackling this one. The best option I have right now is doing that. I'm still trying to figure out how those cats who do it on the, the guitar do it. I think they have Guitar Pro, and they've got some kind of visual thing that does it better but if you got any ideas definitely hit me up because i'm always down to improve my videos but i love the support thank you now going back here talking about this song whoo wee jerry man this is funky we are keeping it even though this is now we finally hit our slow song we got that 808 in the beginning which is a a, a, a drum pad so let's listen to that again it's a very specific sound of this dun, 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 ka, ka, dun. let's listen to it just by itself we get this ton, tito, caca, ton. Yeah, that kind of ton, 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 Yeah, there's a good copyright strike for you for the day. You thought I'd get away with a video without getting demonetized. <laughs> no chance. Okay, good. Okay, I gotta listen to a little more. This is just too good. Oh, man, this is just ding dong funky. Oh, my goodness. Oh, five minutes, dang. Okay, let's cut in, let's cut in. Is that the flugelhorn? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Oh, baby. Flugelhorn. Called it. Okay. Oh, did we look this guy up before? Is this a flugelhorn player that has done other things? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh yeah. Yeah, we looked this dude up. He's played trumpet and flugelhorn on stuff before. Man, is my internet dying on me? Silly internet. All right, well, while we're looking that up, since we've only got four minutes, let's crank on to the last song. But man, this album, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for suggesting this on Sunday. I'm so happy that we're going through this. 
All right, here's the last one, Pretender. So my guess was that this was the slowest jam. Sounds like I'm wrong, but let's see if this is slower than not what I'm looking for. Ooh, this is... I feel dumb. Did I click on the wrong song the whole time? Oh, we're listening to Pretender. So what did we skip? But I am sticking around. <laughs> and I jumped right in the middle of the synth sax solo. I dig it. Okay, so I did call it. I got the last one. So the last song, Pretender, which we listened to thinking it was not what I'm looking for. The giveaway probably should have been the part where he says the word pretender but you know what are you gonna do anyway i think this was a pretty good overview of the first album here from uh yoshino fujimal really really cool we've got a lot of connections here not only to the people that we've looked at but i can already tell just by looking through with things that i have not listened to and artists i'm not familiar with I was starting to see the same pictures and you know the same album covers and names, even though they were unfamiliar. I was seeing the same ones over and over. So I think we found another rabbit hole that we can go down. And the ABs is probably one of the first things we're going to look at. Either that or we're going to look at Matsushi uh, Matsushiro, the uh, guitarist. Or Matsushito? Let me say that right. Yeah, Mat <laughs> Matsushita. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as always, thank you guys all for the support. And, you know, people like Panda, thank you for telling me, you know, all the stuff about, you know, working on the tabs. I appreciate the feedback. And it always helps me when you guys are like, could you work on this? And it's like, yeah, I, I knew I should have worked on that. Now I'm going to work on it. But if you guys enjoyed it, a like and subscribe would mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. And as always, if you got more ideas, more bass tabs, just anything to talk about play need help with hit me up hit me up here hit me up on the discord if you're not on the discord jump on in because it's really really great and fun and they've got way more information than i guess where i pull about over half of my info from anyway but yeah hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day i hope you jam along a little bit to this and i'll catch y'all later peace out y'all and I'm trying to close the stream and I don't know how to close the stream. Oh yeah, oh there we go.